Hey everybody, this is Heather with the Potomac Bee Company. Today I'm going to show you how to do a twisted tubular herringbone. This, um, this bracelet is a herringbone base, and instead of it being uh, just a plain tubular herringbone, it's going to... Uh, where I'm going to show you how to make it twist a little bit. As you can see with this one, I've used three different colors. You don't need to use three different colors. You can just make it one. But as you can see, here are my herringbone. Um, and it's going to be in an even number because herringbone, again, is works with sets of twos to give it that B shape. Um, and it's pretty it's very pretty. It sits nicely on your wrist, and I love the twisted. Um, portion of the herringbone and herringbone is just pretty anyway but we're gonna give this bracelet a little twist uh, literally um, so what with this project what you'll need is three different colors and I used size 80 seed beads so for this project today I'm actually going to be using um, size 80 in an aqua color uh, a a brown, a matte brown color, and a hot pink color. And then you'll also need for your caps um, or your for your end projects, you can either use uh, glass beads, and here I'm using six millimeter glass pearls in a, a beige color, but you can also use end caps if you'd like instead of finishing it off with a um, glass bead. You don't need to use a glass bead. You could use any type of round. And you'll also need a toggle and clasp for um, to finish it off. Um, you'll need a size 10 or 12 beading needle and some thread. I'm actually going to be using our Wildfire 0 .008 inch wildfire in a green and you're going to cut off probably four feet of this. So once you've got your supplies ready, um, let's begin our project. Okay, so once you've got your thread on your needle, I'm going to show you how to begin the project. You're going to pick up two of your green beads, drop them down to the bottom of of the thread, leaving probably seven inches or eight inches, enough of a tail to um, finish your project at the end. <clears throat> and then what we're going to do is just, we're going to do a ladder stitch here. So I have two of my green beads and what I'm going to do is take my needle back up through just the first bead. And what that does is it just makes it sit nice, makes these two sit nice, nicely next to each other. I'm going to take my needle back down the second green bead, teal bead. Now I'm going to pick up one of my brown beads. Then I'm going to take my needle down the second teal bead. And to stabilize or to secure the brown bead so it's not kind of flopping over, I'm going to take my needle back up that brown bead. So here we're, we're just going to continue with our la ladder stitch. Now I'm going to pick up another brown bead and I'm going to take my needle up that first brown bead. And to secure the second brown bead in place so it's not hanging all over, I'm going to take my needle back down the second brown bead I added and it should look like that. Now I'm gonna do the same thing with my pink. Pick up a pink, take my needle down the second brown bead, and then I'm gonna take my needle back up that pink bead. And I'm gonna do that one more time. Pick up a pink bead, and then take my needle up that first pink bead I just added. Pull, and take your needle back down the pink bead to stabilize or to kind of give it more of a secure. So there's our ladder stitch and we're working in groups of twos for each color because that is what a herringbone is. Uh, in order to get that V effect um, for herringbone, you need to work in couples and we're, go we're always gonna be in an even number with herringbone. So if you don't want three colors, you can do this, this bracelet in just two colors. It will be a lot slimmer, but I'm going to work with three. At this point, what I want to do is create my circle. So I'm going to, I want my pink and my teal beads to connect. 
and I'm going to take my needle up my teal bead holding my tail and I'm just going to string it right through just like that and to connect them so that they sit next to each other I'm going to take my needle back down that pink bead and we've got our the beginnings of a circle or a tubular effect. Then I'm going to take my needle back up that teal bead. Now I am ready to begin a basic tubular um, herringbone. It's just it's going to be a very basic tubular herringbone. And we're going to do two rows of that. And to do that, I'm going to pick up two of my teal beads. And I'm going to take my needle down <clears throat> the next teal bead. Move over to your left and take your needle up the brown bead. And pick up two brown beads. Take your needle down the second brown bead in your round. And pull. And then I'm going to take my needle up the pink round the pink bead, continuing in a circular fashion. And at this point I'm going to pick up two pink beads. And then take my needle down the next pink bead. And now I'm going to move my needle up, move it, move your needle to the left to the teal bead. <clears throat> and I'm going to take my needle, I'm stepping up at this row, I don't know if you guys can see clearly. What I'm doing is stepping up um, to my third row and so I'm taking my needle up both of my teal beads. And so for this pattern, my teal bead will always be my step up bead. And now I'm going to pick up two teal beads, take my needle down just one teal bead. Because like I said, we're just doing a regular tubular herringbone. I'm going to take my needle over to the next brown bead in that same, in the second row, in the second column. Getting a lot of shadow here. So I'm trying to hold this close so you guys can see. <clears throat> and right now your project is kind of small and it's really flimsy. It's going to kind of flop all over the place. But once you get to a couple more um, rounds, it will create a nice form. Now that my thread's coming out of my first brown bead, I'm going to pick up two brown beads and I'm going to take my needle down just one brown bead. Like that. And I'm going to move over to my hot pink bead. Take my needle up just one hot pink bead in that second row and I'm going to pick up two pink beads and I'm going to take my needle down that second hot pink bead and pull and at this point I'm going to step up so I'm going to take my needle <clears throat> over to that teal bead and I'm moving up two beads and I'm going to pull and as you can see we have three rows of just regular tubular herringbone at this point we're actually going to start our twisting to start our twisting I'm going to pick up two teal beads Take my needle down just one of my teal beads. And what I want to do, instead of taking my needle up one of my brown, what I want to do is take my needle up two of my browns. So I'm going down a row and taking my needle up two browns. This is what's going to create your twisting effect. Now I'm picking up two browns because my needle's coming out of a brown, taking my needle down just one of uh, one brown, moving my needle, moving my needle and thread to the pink column. And instead of taking it up just one pink, I want to take it up two pinks. So taking my needle down a row 
and up two pinks. <clears throat> now my needle's coming out of a pink, so I'm going to pick up two pinks, take my needle down one pink, and instead of going over in the same row, I want to go down one row. And now we're at the teal where we're stepping up. So instead of taking our needle up just two beads, we're going to take our needle up three beads because now we are stepping up to our next row. I'm going to show you a couple more times. I'm going to pick up two teals because I'm my needle's coming out of a teal. Take my needle down one teal and go down one row and then take my needle up two browns. Move your needle over to the left, down one row, so your needle is going up two browns. Pick up two browns, because your needle is, your thread's coming out of a brown. Take your needle down the next brown, just down one bead. Move over to the pink column and take your needle Move your needle down one row and take it up two pink beads, not one, just two. My thread's coming out of a pink, so I'm going to pick up two pinks. Take my needle down the next pink, over, and instead of staying in that row, I'm going to go down one and take my needle up three beads and I'm taking them up three beads because I am stepping up. I'm going to show you one more time. Pick up two teal beads, take your needle down one teal bead. Move your needle over to the brown column and take your take your needle down two beads so that your needle goes up two. Go down one row and then take your needle up two beads. <clears throat> Add two browns. Take your needle down just one brown. Move over to the pink beads and instead of taking your needle up the, just one pink bead, you're going to take your needle up two pink beads. And then pull. Pick up two pink beads, take your needle down one pink bead, and then move over to the teal column and take your needle up three teal beads because this is the column where we are stepping up. And as you can see, um, if you're looking down at your project, you're going to see it kind of twist. And it will eventually have a nice twisting form. Um, it takes probably a good inch, an inch, or inch and a half before you see a really pretty twisting effect. Um, and you're going to continue that pattern that I just taught you, I just showed you. So you see this is where we're at right now. And then pretty soon you'll see it really twist and really take shape, really take form. It's very pretty. Um, it is a very repetitive um, motion and it's easy to get. So um, if you have, a, have problems with the pattern, just rewind um, and watch it over again so that you can you understand or you get it. Um, but continue what, I, what we just talked, what I just showed you, until you've reached the length of your bracelet. So once you've achieved the length of your bracelet, I'm going to show you how to attach your clasps and your toggle. I'm going to show you how to end it. The way that I ended the one that um, I showed previously to you, um, I pretty much finished the top of the bracelet in a, um, the same way that I started my bracelet was um, a ladder stitch. So instead of adding more beads and continue my twisted tubular herringbone, I'm going to finish it as a tubular herringbone reinforce um, with a ladder stitch and I added a glass bead here um, a glass round bead and <clears throat> for my toggle side I added some 
some ADOs, and then my toggle. Um, and you don't need to add a glass uh, round bead or any bead of any sort. What you could do, you could also use a cone or a spacer bead or any kind of decorative, um, any anything decorative would, would be suitable for ending this tubular uh, uh, twisted herringbone. Did the same thing for the other side. Instead, I used my uh, class portion. So, and I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So, if you have a couple of round beads, I use six millimeter. Um, and once I've stepped up, I have finished my twisted tubular by stepping up, and I I step up with my green bead. What I'm going to do is just finish this off by doing a simple to uh, simple tubular herringbone. So I'm taking my needle back down just one of <clears throat> of my um, of my green bead and I'm actually just going to connect it going up the the last two instead of adding on I'm just going to go back down the um, one of my brown bead not adding on any more beads and then I'm taking my needle back up the two pink and then taking my needle down one pink and going up two greens <clears throat> And this is just kind of stabilizing it. At this point, I'm going to go down one green bead, and I'm going to go up one brown bead. Go <clears throat> down one brown bead, and up one of the pink beads. And here, this is pretty much where we're doing our uh, ladder stitch here. We're just connecting everything to make sure it's a ladder stitch. Then I'm going to go down the pink bead, <clears throat> and I'm going to go up the green bead. And at this point, what I'm going to do is kind of reverse it because I don't want my beads to bow inwards. So I'm going to reverse my stitch, my ladder stitch. I'm going to go down, back down the pink bead, and then take it up the second pink bead. <clears throat> and then I'm going to go take my needle back over to the right. I'm going around, down the brown bead, and then up the second brown bead. And then take my needle down the green bead, move it over to the right, down the green, and then move it over to the right and up the green bead. And I'm going to finish the row by moving it, moving my needle over to the right and taking it down the pink. And we've pretty much just completed, if you look down, you've just done um, a ladder stitch in a circular pattern, which is kind of how we started at the very beginning. So you are finishing the way that you started. And then I'm gonna take my needle back up the pink bead. Now at this point, what I'm going to do is add my um, round bead. I'm gonna pick my round bead up, and I'm also going to pick up my clasp. And I'm going to skip my clasp and take my needle back down uh, my round bead. And at the same time, I'm going to take it down the pink bead. And as you can see, it's kind of off-centered. It's kind of more on just the one side where my pink beads are. And what I'm gonna do is keep it centered. I want it centered in my tubular um, bracelet. So I'm going to move my needle over to the green bead. And then I'm going to take my needle up back up through the round bead and take it through my clasp, take my needle through my clasp and back down the round bead. <clears throat> and at this point, I'm going to take my needle down the second green bead. And then as you can see, it's kind of moving back over to the middle. So at this point, I'm gonna take my needle up the brown and this is where it's gonna be a little difficult because it's getting kind of tight. And I'm gonna take my needle up the glass, my round bead, take it through my clasp, and then take my needle back down the round bead. It might get a little tight, that's why I recommend a glass round or something with a, some kind of bead with a large hole of some sort. I'm gonna pull tight and then I'm going to take my needle down the second brown. Now if you've noticed, what we've done, if you kind of gently pull, what we've done is take our needle and thread through each 8 o seed bead at that top, and we've taken it through the bead. And what that did 
was it centralized the glass bead or the round bead in the middle of our tubular bracelet. And I'm going to end it by taking it back up through my glass, my uh, pink bead. <clears throat> and you can reinforce if you want, um, if you have enough room. Mine was getting a little bit tight, so I might just do it a couple more times. And, and then you're going to tie off your thread. You're going to bring your thread, kind of tie it off with half hitch notches down below and um, cut your cut any extra thread that you might have. And you're going to do the same thing with any kind of thread that you added on to your project like I did here. And for the other side, what you're going to do is pretty much the same thing. The only difference is, since it's my toggle, since I'm adding my toggle, um, <clears throat> I like to give an extra, a little bit of extra room so I'm not pulling on my bracelet when I'm adding on, when I'm adding my bracelet on. So what I did was I added three seed beads above my, um, my round. And what that does is, like I said, it just kind of gives it a little bit of extra pulling room so that you're not pulling on anything. And it might be a little bit decorative as well. So that's pretty much what I did. And you're going to do the same thing. You're adding your round bead, three eight O's or two, whichever you prefer, and then your toggle. And you're going to take your needle back down and do the same thing that you did to the other side. So, and that is how you've <clears throat> finish. Uh, that's how you um, will do and, and complete your bracelet of this twisted tubular herringbone. I hope, um, <clears throat> I hope you enjoyed watching the video and if you have any questions, please feel free to ask us. We'll try our best to answer them and check us out on any other of our YouTube videos and um, our Facebook page and hopefully we'll see you in the store one day. Again, thanks for watching.